After 30 pints of tea and 10 hobnobs, here's our honest and unbiased view of GT Sport, the real dustbin man driving simulator. Now I'm going to be kind and we're going to start off by talking about what I think GT Sport actually does well. The biggest selling point, the most exciting part of GT Sport and then we'll get into the more depressing aspects. And where GT Sport really shines and what Polyphony Digital have really succeeded in doing is for the first time we have here a console racing game that actually has decent ranked multiplayer on it. And they've kind of gone for a somewhat iRacing-esque system where you've got a safety rating, you've got ranking, and you have somewhat organized races that you can jump on into, matches you with people, and then you race against them. Unfortunately, they've made some rather bizarre design choices in terms of the frequency of those races, how often the tracks change, how long those races are, and the options available to you. But ignoring that, at its fundamental level, you can jump into a multiplayer race on GT Sport having just got the game and generally have a race that resembles something reasonably similar to what you'd expect from real world driving, i.e. cars not driving horizontally into each other at 120 miles an hour and it essentially always being some bizarre destruction derby. That I think is absolutely incredible. I, say, I can't state this is the biggest thing for console racing games this system with improvements and some polish granted it's not perfect but the general idea of ranking and the structure and essentially just copying eye racing putting that in a console racing game is a good idea everybody should do it every racing simulator on the pc side every rate semi somewhat realistic driving game on the console side needs to copy this sort of system and the key component of the system is the matchmaking. As many of you know, Project Cars 2, for example, has really nice safety rating and ranking to it, but it doesn't have the matchmaking. So it really falls to the wayside other than it just being used as a general filter. As it is right now, we have Sim Racing System, which is a mod for Assetto Corsa on the PC side, GT Sport and iRacing when it comes to realistic driving games or somewhat realistic driving games that have ranking systems in them. Bizarre in my mind, given that to have good online racing, this is what you need. <laughs> there's, no, there's no choice. In the same way that if you play Rocket League, you, your games are going to be terrible. If you didn't have ranking, if you play the games in Rocket League that don't have the ranking, it's awful. You need, for, for games that have a high skill ceiling, are, are, are you know very skill based and dependent on your opponents to be good you need ranking systems and you need matchmaking for it to all come together so needless to say well done GT Sport let's just I'm just praying to the lord of driving games that everyone sees this and they go right yeah this, this is a this is this is this needs to be in all driving games from now on or any driving game that's borderline realistic this needs to be done like this so that is the best thing with GT Sport, this online system. Everything else, um, not so good. Well, actually, we're not going to the negatives yet. There, there are some more positives. You've heard a couple of dustbin men now already. As I say, the, the dustbin simulation in this is incredible. There goes a traffic cone in your face. Other positives, the graphics, given that this is also running on a, a bog standard PlayStation, not the PlayStation Pro, no, this is running on the £230, including the game, bog standard PlayStation 4. And it looks absolutely stunning, I have to say. I'm really happy with the end quality of this. The track details are really nice. Tons of track side details, the actual track model quality, the textures, the car cockpits look absolutely superb. The lighting, the tone of the lighting uh, is incredible at times. You watch some of the replays, and uh, uh, there's certain shots you'd be, you'd be mistaken for thinking, oh, that's a, that could be a video of a you know real-world cars going around a circuit. The graphics aren't perfect. We can see here the reflection in the cockpit. It's almost as if the windscreen is a, a, a mirror. <laughs> but, you know, and there is a lot of aliasing in certain situations, especially if you sit closer to your, to your TV screen, or we were using a projector in this case. You do notice that the resolution might not be the best. Maybe if you're playing on the Pro and you paid a bit more, you know, you run at 4K, that might remove some of the aliasing. 
But all said and done, playing this as someone that normally plays on PC, you know, with a pretty ridiculous spec computer, I, I, I wasn't playing this thinking, oh god, it looks horrendous, or this is really ruining the experience for me. It looked really nice. It ran really smooth. In fact, very rarely, occasionally you get some, some slowdown, but nothing major. Um, I'm really positively surprised by the general performance and visual clarity of this. Give credit to the fact that, as I say, a PlayStation 4 only costs 230 quid with the game. So factoring all that in, I think that is really quite impressive. And lastly, for the positives, I was playing this with a uh, Thrustmaster T300 force feedback wheel with the with the pedals that come with that T300. Also played it with a gamepad. We'll go into that later. I actually think the force feedback in this isn't too bad. It's actually fairly reasonable in the sense that you get from the force feedback in this game. You've got self-aligning. For those of you that don't know, that's the sort of nature of the car to correct the steering in the direction of, of least resistance. So the car is basically telling you where it wants to be turned to put the least amount of load on the tires to actually go faster. That seems to work pretty well. That also brings in the back end of the car if you step it out as well. Um, you also get reasonable sort of understeer shake uh, vibration and feel for when you're pushing uh, too hard on the front of the tires when the car's starting to understeer, which is often lacking from a lot of games, even on the simulator side. So that's done quite well. And generally, it actually worked pretty reasonable with uh, the steering wheel in terms of telling you what's going on. So I thought the force feedback was reasonable. I don't think it was amazing. It's, you know, it's not like it's not as good as, say, a Seto Corsa or you know the top PC sims in, in general, but it wasn't awful. I didn't think, oh, this is terrible force feedback. And I think having looked at um, some other people's comments and reviews online, I think maybe there's some, some funky stuff going on with various wheels on the market and uh, some wheels working better than others, which is often the case when it comes to force feedback and wheel support, even more so on console. But I have to say with the T300, I was actually reasonably su pleasantly surprised with the force feedback. It, it worked to a acceptable level, I'd say. All that positivity out of the way, let's move to the part of the video that you miserable boys and girls are looking forward to, and that is the, the negatives and what this game really fails at. And the most prominent negative and completely unbelievable thing to me that this game does is the online connectivity and how you can't save. You, If you don't, if the Sony servers go down, which went down at least four times in the, in, in, in the time that we've been playing this, if that happens, you can't save anything. Even if you're doing the one mode in the game that's accessible when the servers have gone down, which is the arcade mode, which basically lets you do racing against AI where you start at the back and you try and beat them, it won't save it if you happen to beat them in that mode. It won't save any of your progress. I didn't know this when I was first playing the game, and we played through a whole bunch of stuff and um, d deleted. No, no stats, saved, nothing. Goodbye, goodbye four hours of, of doing stuff. How is that even acceptable to a basic level? And then, separate to not saving anything, the bulk of the game, the bulk of what you could call single player, is all tied to the online stuff. Even when it, it, there's no need for it, it's mostly single player stuff still, but it's you can't actually access it. If the servers go down, you can't do any of this sort of career stuff, um, specific level stuff, or you know all the other single player modes. You can't even access them. That to me is absurd, and uh, that out of anything else that's wrong with this game makes me want to put the game in the dustbin. Um, absolutely unbelievable and atrocious design choice there. Someone at Polyphony Digital needs to be thrown off the cliffs of Dover for those uh, design choices. Let's move on to our second negative point. Gran Turismo on the box claims to be the real driving simulator. Now, as a warning, I've not driven a real sports car around a, a full-size racetrack. I've been a passenger in a Honda Type R. It's probably the fastest car being sat inside. I wasn't driving it. I've driven go-karts and stuff. And, you know, my knowledge is just based off a general expectation of how cars generally behave on a road surface. That said, 
In no way would I ever use Gran Turismo to practice for the real world activity of driving. If I was going to go to a racetrack and do a track day, I would not use this to practice in the slightest. Maybe to learn a track layout. I think the tracks are nicely done. The actual track models are really, really good, actually. Maybe to appreciate the car models and see what the car interiors look like and, you know, look at the, uh, the branding and all that stuff. But when it comes to the actual handling of the vehicles, I would not use this as a simulator. I would use Project Cars 2, Assetto Corsa, R Factor 2, R Factor 1. I would use just about anything but this to actually practice for the activity of real world driving. In my opinion, this is not a simulator in the slightest. I don't know why they're even pretending to call it a real driving simulator, the real driving sim simulator, implying it is the, the, be the best driving simulator. Mind you, I don't think anybody really expects Gran Turismo to, to be a fully fledged simulator. Though you, know, you would hope maybe that with GT Sport that was what they really focused on and they, maybe they changed all the underlying physics and that's the direction of going in. But no, they, you know, it's, it's not a driving simulator. So with that in mind though, and this applies to all driving games, the, the question is, is it still actually fun to drive? That's more important really than if it's a good simulator because let's face it, most of us aren't actually going to drive any of these cars in, in real life because we're not... We're not, uh, we haven't been driving since the age of eight, or we just don't have that kind of money to hand, which is why we're playing video games in the first place. And well, unfortunately, I don't think it's a particularly good arcade driving game or a particularly good simulator. The, the handling is rather strange in this. Now, that's not to say it's terrible, and I can see a lot of people enjoying it, especially if you come from other GT games and you know, you like the depth that's there because it does. It does have a large amount of depth to the underlying physics engine in the game. There's a lot going on there, and you can tell, you can appreciate that playing with a wheel or a gamepad. You do have nice subtleties to the car, like lift-off, oversteer. You do have a sort of uh, understeer grit that kicks in and the way the cars respond to the throttle and the brake. It's generally kind of how you'd expect real-world cars to handle. There's, there's aspects to it that actually quite realistic in places or and quite satisfying and quite consistent and learnable the problem is a lot of the cars in the game seem to have really irritating aspects to them so for example uh, a, a good car that really highlights what i think is a problem with the handling in the game uh, the honda type r the understeer in that vehicle is unbelievable it's the you, the car will have reasonable grip it's, it's fairly boaty at the best of times but you'll have reasonable grip and then as soon as the understeer starts it doesn't stop it's like someone's just replaced all the, the front tires with bars of soap it doesn't make any sense i've i mean i've sat in that car around a race circuit it's absolutely glued glued to the track it's an effort for the driver to get that car to to to, to not stick to the circuit and in Gran Turismo the the car just it's so vague it's just not satisfying to drive ignoring what's realistic or not it's just not satisfying and, and this kind of goes through in varying degrees to all the cars in the game if I was going to distill the handling nature and what it's like to drive in GT Sport. The best way to describe it would be, it's as if you're not driving through air, but you're driving cars through honey. And um, not only that, but the moment you start going over the limit with the fronts you understeer, the tires are replaced by bars of soap and you have to wait until the good sort of four centimeters of soap has worn off the tires and then the tires return back to you. Most, most games, when you start sliding, you know, you get a bit of understeer, a bit of slip in them, but it comes back a lot sooner. It's super vague as well when it does come back and at what point it will come back in, in Gran Turismo. And it's not limited just to the understeer. You'll find with a lot of the vehicles, especially the road cars, when you start doing trying to do the drifting in them, it's really, really, really hard to drift in Gran Turismo. Um, way harder than any of the driving simulators I've played. Um, and way harder than really simplified arcade games. It's as if they've really got the, the worst of both worlds here and they've gone for something, as I say, that's not 
realistic but very deep and not arcade but the, the result is something that's quite frustrating at least for me as someone that's coming to the series afresh i would imagine if you play gran turismo games a lot and you know and you've got used to this type of handling maybe it's what you expect maybe it's like you know if you play something like fifa a lot and you go to pro evolution soccer both games have a completely arbitrary design to how they work because they're totally abstract from the real activity it's, it's very hard to learn the new game's way of doing things but if you've been playing that game for a long time it seems normal and right to you so maybe, maybe if you play gt a lot this is fine maybe you'll really enjoy it but for me coming to it as a new player um and i saw i do like arcade driving games i love wipeout i love um mario kart track mania uh, split second burnout I, I love arcade racing games but as someone that comes from it with a sort of arcade racing history and a driving simulator history this is just it's really bizarre really strange and, and needlessly difficult normally you'd expect um, a less realistic driving game to try and make things easier really because that makes it more appealing to a wider market this is harder than any of the driving simulators have played <laughs> so yeah really weird design choices but there you go and uh, as i say driving in honey with oversteer that gets stuck in understeer that gets stuck in and very unwilling to move around cars is probably the best way to describe it before i move away from the this the depressing topic of the handling of GT Sport. One thing I did start to notice as well is you eventually sort of work out ways that the game seems to want you to play it to go faster. One of them seems to be that you actually ignore the force feedback for the understeer, turn your steering wheel a lot harder than, than you generally would if you're approaching it in a more realistic sense, then power on through, and that actually pushes you around the corner. Um, it, it doesn't make sense. The more you try and play this like a real like a simulator the more you try and actually get better at it and get faster at it and put more time into it which is kind of what the game is encouraging with its online competitive aspect i find the worse it actually gets and the less enjoyable it is and that brings us to the gamepad implementation um and the, just the lack of choice i mean this is a console thing consoleitis here you you have so little choice in how you can adjust the controls for, for example, with the gamepad, it's got seven numbers of sensitivity from, from 0 to 7. But even on maximum sensitivity, there's an absolutely absurd amount of smoothing. And it takes like almost a second to go from lock to lock with the, with the gamepad. So if you are the type of player that wants to actually drive on the limit with the gamepad and apply opposite lock uh, and, uh, and you know respond to the game with immediacy, you can't. Denied. You can't play the game like that. With the gamepad, you kind of just have to go with how the game does the steering on top of what you're doing. And there's there's no real choice about it. And then you kind of have to learn that, that game's approach to it, rather than just driving the car yourself. When you plug a steering wheel into it, you do get one-to-one -one input. It's not too bad, actually, in terms of smoothing. And, you know, it, it works as you'd expect a steering wheel to work. But then the steering wheel makes more obvious the underlying aspects of the physics. So... In many ways, though it's harder and though it doesn't make much intuitive sense, I think the game is really designed to be played with a gamepad and the convenience aspect I find with the gamepad is more suited with this game. Um, on the, on the uh, wheel input side though as well, in terms of lack of controls and options, you can't choose any pedal options. You can't choose dead zones and sensitivity and there definitely seems to be some weird automatic... Uh, smoothing on the throttle and brake input with the controller, uh, uh, maybe interpolation. I don't know what's going on there. Um, interestingly, the accelerator and the brake pedal with the gamepad actually was immediate one to one and, and actually worked quite well. But yeah, just the total lack of options in this game and how irritating and fiddly it is to change anything. It's just it boggles the mind. I mean, I guess if you again if you maybe you play gt games and this is all you know and you've never played any other driving sims or driving games maybe, you know you might be like okay this is just how it is but in the context of all games available it's so bad it's so limited and crippled well i'll oh, have a cup of tea right cup of tea consumed we are we're calmed down now so another aspect of gt sport that to me doesn't make much sense obviously 
the focus is the online with this title and that's what I, I guess that's what the you know it's, it's the multiplayer racing and the online system they set up the online system is well done but the handling and stuff kind of negates that but yes the online system is well done so fair enough that's a focus having said that I would have thought most fans of Gran Turismo are playing Gran Turismo to go through the whole sort of single player experience unlock cars maybe tweak those cars maybe drive a specific car do stuff to it you know try and get as far as they can with the car they like all that stuff and it seems as if GT Sport that's just that's gone the single player is uh, essentially a bunch of sort of tutorial lessons of do this arbitrary task so stop the car at a certain point overtake a certain number of cars uh but it, but it doesn't seem that particularly fleshed out now despite that i i think it, sometimes it can be quite fun doing those arbitrary tasks and i did enjoy doing some of them because it's just different from what i'm used to playing with the driving simulators but i would have thought given its heritage given what gran turismo typically was in the past there would be more of a, a fleshed out single player. I mean, this isn't like a, a, a three-man development team with a small audience they're selling to. This is a huge franchise console selling title. There's no real excuse not to have lots of tracks and lots of cars and the multiplayer. I don't get why you wouldn't why you wouldn't build on what they'd already established, especially given the arcade nature of what this game is and its sort of arbitrary design choices. Why not continue that heritage and also do the multiplayer? stuff that they've added to it it also really what really stands out is just the lack of tracks in this there's a total of 19 tracks uh with 27 different layouts but some of those tracks are random rally tracks i don't know why people want to do the rally driving in this because it's just weird it's something it's like super arcade sega rally type rally which is fine i mean it's kind of fun but it's just it doesn't fit in with the game and then you've got some oval tracks, and the oval driving in this is atrocious. Um, so that doesn't make much sense. Um, if, if, they, if they're doing the multiplayer focus, then get a bunch of real-world tracks licensed, build them, and focus on that. Or do like have a ton of fantasy tracks, but have a really nice single player to it, and unlocking the tracks and, and stuff. I did... The end result is I just feel that this game totally lacks focus. It doesn't know what it's supposed to be. I don't know who it's supposed to appeal to. I think a hardcore GT fan would be depressed by this. I think a hardcore racer would just go, why am I not playing iRacing, SimRacing System or PC simulators? The only people this probably would make sense to is someone that happens to own a PlayStation 4 uh, and has just picked this up and they're like, well, I've got a PlayStation 4. This is all I've got to play. I mean... That said, though, on the other side of it, I am sort of coming this from a sort of snobby, have too much sim racing equipment perspective. And if I sort of think of it from a value for money side of things, it's, it's not bad. I can see how you can get 30, 40 hours of enjoyment from this for a 50 pound game. Maybe that's not too bad. I could see how if maybe when I was sort of 13 to 16 or so and maybe I had like a brother or sister that I played games with, you could do the split screen in this. It's something to load up. You can have fun playing it. So, you know, it's not too bad on that side either. So in certain contexts, the game makes sense. I think a lot of people would really enjoy it. But from the other context of the real driving simulator, the online connectivity issues, the sounds, Dustbin Man... 2017 bin lid closing sound effect every 400 times a race from that perspective i just want to put my head in the microwave so it's a mixed bag i think it's going to be a divisive title i think i think some people are really going to enjoy it and swear by it other people are just going to go well why are you even bothering to play it i can see how if i i think i might keep the playstation 4 i bought a playstation 4 just for this game it's actually surprised me how good the playstation 4 was in terms of as i say again what you get for your value for money i quite like the console i quite like the controller and stuff i could see how i could maybe keep hold of this and uh, i'd have it there for when i've, I've had too many uh, doritos and uh, i'm inebriated and I, I just want to sit on the sofa and play a driving game i could see how it could be fun in that context i think it could have been a lot better it's, it's a mixed bag, as I say. I mean, and that's probably the best way to, to uh, summarise and finish this review. 
Um, if you're a PC sim racing train spotter lunatic like myself, I wouldn't go out and buy a PlayStation and buy this. If you've got a PlayStation 4, I think you probably get enjoyment from it. I think it's not the GT that GT fans want, but there you go. Um, I definitely need another cup of tea after this. I'm really excited to get back in my sim rig and play <laughs> play with a direct drive wheel, set a course, a race room online with people, Project Cars 2. I can't wait. Um, those of you watching this that are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe if you like this kind of uh, somewhat casual, but as honest and unbiased review as I can get my head around. I, th I think we've been reasonably fair. Click the subscribe button, like it, drop us a comment, let me know what you think. We'll have a couple more GT Sport videos. We've got some other stuff I want to cover with it, some interesting points to talk about. But um, until the next one, everybody, thanks for watching. Happy bin day. Goodbye.